You may recall the 2004 blockbuster Hotel Rwanda about real-life hero Paul Rusesa Bagina, who at the height of the Rwandan genocide reportedly helped save more than 1,000 people when they took shelter at a hotel where he was the manager. Now, nearly 20 years after that movie came out, Paul is back in Rwanda, but this time in jail and charged with more than a dozen terror-related offensive. If convicted, he could spend the rest of his life in prison. So exactly how did Rwanda's hero end up behind bars? ABC's Maggie Ruley has this story. It's a story of heroism in the midst of a brutal genocide that became immortalized by Hollywood. Don Cheadle playing the real life Paul Rusesabagina in Hotel Rwanda. Look at them. These are not rebels. Soon they will be worthless to you. Why not take some money for your work? How much? The Oscar-nominated movie showing how Paul apparently helped more than a thousand people take shelter in Hotel de Micheline during Rwanda's darkest days. The 1994 genocide, where in just 100 terrifying and violent days, nearly one million ethnic Tutsis were killed by Hutu extremists. After the movie's release, Paul quickly ascended to fame, giving highly paid speeches around the world, even receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Without that shelter, every one of them would almost surely have been killed. But real life is often messier than it looks on the big screen. And now the man who was once the darling of the international community has found himself behind bars in his home country, fighting for his reputation and freedom. Uh, we begin now very early on was uh, collaborating with um, groups that committed genocide here in 94 and that escaped to Congo, the FDLR. The evidence against him is overwhelming. Rwandan prosecutors have charged him with 13 terror-related offenses, including financing terrorists, complicity in murder, and forming a rebel group. Paul has maintained his innocence. The understanding has always been that these allegations against Paul are linked to his criticism of the regime that's in power in Rwanda. Paul, who's a permanent U.S. resident and whose family lives in San Antonio, alleges he was kidnapped by Rwandan authorities back in August, something Rwanda's president vehemently denies. There was no kidnap, there was no any wrongdoing uh, in the process of his getting here. Paul claims he was tricked by a pastor into boarding a private jet while transiting to Dubai, thinking he was going to speak at churches in Burundi. We said I'm going to speak to speeches as to, to churches, and I didn't think too much into it because my dad, my dad has spoken to uh, churches in the past. Instead, the plane landed in Rwanda, where he was promptly arrested. He's being held in a cell that doesn't have a window. He's held in that cell for 22 and a half hours per day. If it's raining, he's in there for 24 hours. He has no access to his legal documents. He has no access to his case file. Human Rights Watch says his arrest amounted to an enforced disappearance, a serious violation of international law. In recent years, Paul's become an outspoken critic of the Rwandan government, and some of his luster has faded. Paul's family is now trying to remind the international community of his legacy and the injustices he's facing. This is a sham trial. If you're a dissident in Rwanda, you can go to jail, you can get imprisoned, you know, you can get killed. And on top of that, my father has a platform that President Kagame doesn't like. You know, my father has been able to tell the world that that has, has had the chance to tell the world about what happens in Rwanda. Rwandan's strongman president, Paul Kagame, is often called the darling tyrant. The U.S. is one of his staunchest allies and oldest supporters, and some credit him with turning the country into an economic powerhouse for the region in the years after the genocide. But President Kagame has been consolidating power now for decades and is known for sniffing out his enemies. Please hold, please hold, please hold. Thank you. Paul Rusesabagina's adoptive daughter, Anais, whose biological parents died in the genocide, believes that ever since the 2004 film came out, President Kagame has had a personal vendetta against her father. When my father received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, Kagame also increased his attacks on him. He, we, our house got broken up several times. Uh, my father had to wear a bulletproof jacket every time he had to give a speech. Paul's lawyers say he isn't getting a fair trial in Rwanda and that his fate is already sealed. He'll likely be convicted.
But the scars of the Rwandan genocide are omnipresent. Almost everything in daily life ties back to it, and Paul's trial is no different. Since Paul's name has resurfaced, so have the memories of some genocide survivors who question Hollywood's heroic portrayal of the former hotel manager. Yes, yes. He cut off our means of communication, especially the fax machine that we use to communicate with the outside world. Because we were in distress, we would send messages so we could get help and also tell the international community what was going on. At one point, they asked us for money. They were given instructions that whomever wasn't able to pay would need to leave the hotel. And since I had a check on me, I gave them one. Zozo worked for Paul at the hotel and recounts similar instances. Paul says he protected people. It's a lie. I have many examples. If you didn't have money, he wouldn't let you stay at the hotel. Either you gave him a check or you paid cash. Instead of protecting people, he made it a business. Others who had hit at the hotel say they didn't even know who Paul was. The name Paul Rusesabagina, I only heard it when the movie came out and everyone started talking about it. I never heard of him when I was at the hotel. In fact, the Rwandan government claims the reason Hotel Demi Colina was spared had nothing to do with Paul at all. France asked the government uh, that was carrying out the genocide not to kill people in uh, Minicolin. It is written in uh, documents, uh, French documents. You know, it's very clear. Paul's trial is expected to last several more months. And while some in Rwanda can't garner sympathy for him, Paul's family is pleading for the international community's help. He believes in uh, human rights. He believes in principles and in the law, you know, in justice. It encourages me even more to bring him back and to fight for his release because we're on the side of the truth. Maggie Ruley for ABC News. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.